Let's give him a hand as our panelists come up on stage. So hello everyone again, my name is Dennis Baker, I'm the Business Program Director, thanks for everyone coming out, thanks for everyone that's watching on the live stream, um, we're here to help actors and that's what the foundation is about. And one of the foundations of actors' lives is the headshot and something that is integral to your work and to everything that you do. Before we jump into that, I would like our panelists to kind of go down, introduce their name, whatever you like, to, you know, a little something about yourself. Um, and then we'll jump into it. So obviously we'll start here. Okay. Um, I'm Maya. I am a commercial casting director with Allison Horn. And I am Maya of Maya Shoots Photography. So I do both photography and commercial casting, and I came to it from acting, so I feel your pain. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hi, I am Joanna Davis. I am a casting associate slash director, working mostly in theatrical TV feature films, uh, originally from New York, been out here for about 10 years, so I have, you know, the New York in me, um, <laughs> and yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Hi, I'm Lori Records uh, of Lori Records Casting, uh, commercial casting director. Uh, let's see, I've had that company for about eight years, if I have paid attention. Um, I was a uh, once upon a time theater actor from Seattle, so stage work only never wanted to be in front of the camera, but definitely uh, enjoy helping you be in front of the camera. Uh, and let's see, you can find me at 200 South. Hi, everybody. Uh, very uncomfortable up here, but anyway, <laughs> Paul Smith, uh, photographer. Uh, I've been shooting for 15 plus years, and um, it's been a pleasure, and uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you all for coming. Um, we're gonna jump into it. Um, we're gonna start with the photographers because that's you know, kind of where it starts with in this headshot conversation. Once a client has decided to shoot with you, once they're like, yes, this is the, the photographer you wanna go with, what do you need them to come with? You know, is it the first conversation about the types they play? Is the first conversation about clothing? Is it a combination of both? Just kind of like talk to us about, okay, they show up and how do you, how do you start with each client? Ladies first. For me, uh, the first conversation is really to gauge how well you guys know who you are. And that to me is like, beyond what type you play, beyond you thinking that you're in this age range and you can do everything from a mom to bikini model. Um, you know, a lot of times actors have unrealistic expectations of the roles they want to go out for. So I try to have a conversation just to get a sense of how happy you are being who you are. And uh, once we sort of get, once I get a sense that you're not gonna come to me with unrealistic expectations that I cannot provide for you, uh, we'll have a pretty specific conversation about wardrobe. And for me, because I have the casting side and the photography, um, I feel like I have a little bit of inside knowledge, so I'll usually go to your profile and I'll have a look at the headshots you're currently using. And that will give me a sense of what I think isn't working, and I'll also have a talk with you about what you feel isn't working or whether or not you feel like your pictures are a good represent, uh, representation of where you're at in your career and who you actually are. For our office and for me, what, what we celebrate is not you trying to fit into a bunch of different categories, but you owning what your style actually is. And so there's a through line ultimately, hopefully that comes through with all of your photos uh, that might just be a representation of who you are in, a, in any given week. So what are you wearing when you're going to work on Monday morning or what are you wearing when you're going on a job interview to what are you wearing to have brunch with the girls on Sunday and what are you wearing to have um, you know, a date with your husband. So we kinda, I kind of go through all of those scenarios so that the, clothes you're bringing are specific to brands that I think you're right for and specific to who you actually are. So you feel like you're celebrating yourself and not trying to fit into a box that your agent wants you to get. 
And sometimes I will overrule the agent and I'll say, listen, we can shoot you in that, but I'm telling you that that's not accurate. And that, you know, might not win me m many fans, but my goal for your session is for you to have auditions that are very, very specific and uh, accurate for you, as opposed to you getting the one shot that maybe reads like a mom and getting into the room and getting that mom audition only to have everyone say, I don't know, I just didn't really buy her as a mom. And so maybe that means you have fewer actual auditions, but the ones you have are um, jobs you can actually book. So that's my goal. Hmm? Paul, would you be your perspective on that? Um, I, I agree with everything, um, everything she was saying. Uh, the way I usually do things is after, after a client books in, um, I will, uh, First of all, I'd probably ask them if they have an agent or do not have an agent. That would probably be my first question because if you have an agent, it's really, really important to get on the same page with your reps about how they cast you, what they send you out on, what you've booked before, what you want to book, and how you see yourself and also how they see you. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, um, somewhere in between that, everybody will come together. Sorry, <laughs> not, not used to the microphone. <laughs> Hopefully, in some way, you'll come together to sort of a common ground between everybody, you know, agents, you, me, and whoever else, your mum. And then, and then you'll find sort of a, sort of a, a, a sort of a, you know, an area where everybody's like, okay, well, this is, this is how you should dress accordingly. This is how, what you should bring. Um, and that sort of thing. If you don't have an agent, then it's probably mostly my job to sort of figure out how to cast you and where you fit into this sort of huge picture that is the business. And um, then I guess my sort of expertise of, you know, 15, 15 years sort of comes in and you can go, okay, well, you know, how I probably would ask the person actually where do they see themselves and what shows they see themselves working on um, commercially and theatrically as well, um, and then sort of go from there. And I have a general, like, and also here's another thing is, you know, if you don't have an agent, then you kind of want to get, I mean, some people like super specific, on some casting people like it super specific, it depends on what's going out for. Some people like super specific and other, other agents and managers want something where they, you know what, I can get the, age, I can get the actor in the door, just wear a, a t-shirt and you can wear a tank and that's it. And other people want to get a lot more specific and sort of go, okay, we want something where, where you can read, you know, you haven't got any major credits, so you know, you're going out, you're going out for guest stars and co-star roles and stuff like that, under fives. And you want to say, okay, well, we want something we can, we, they can look at you, casting can look at the person and go, you know what, I can see them as this person. And that doesn't mean for me, super specific, like you don't have to wear, you know, scrubs or anything like that, although some people like that as well. But for me, it's not usually that, but it gives uh, casting an idea of like, okay, well, I could see them in scrubs or I could see them as like the mum or I could see them as the young teen or I could see them as the cop or the detective or whatever, you know, and so that sort of is my job. And when you get a little more, if you don't have an agent, it is a little, it is a little bit more specific to uh, important to do that because what happens is if you go to, it, there are a lot of photographers in town, but if you go to somebody that's, you know, has a fairly good reputation and they know the business a little bit and you get shots that are generally great and you look like the characters that they want to pitch you for, then they're not going to say to you, oh, these are horrible, go shoot again. So you, you're not gonna waste your money twice, or three times, or four times, or whatever, how many times you wanna do it. Um, so that would probably be how I would start. Um, then, also, uh, when, when, when I'm talking to an actor, I will also sort of, I'm, I think the good thing about what, what I do is, I'm a, I'm a people person, and I really, I'm, a good judge of uh, people's characters as soon as I meet them, even through email, I can kind of like get a gauge of like what people are like and I say my intuition is quite good and I, and I believe in what people are um, selling. So 
uh, that that sort of um, helps me as well decide like what to do and w what to wear and backgrounds and all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know where I was going with that bit, but um, that's and I think there's a tie-in here though with my Osana that I want to um, for Lori and Joanna. Sometimes casting or the behind the table world will use when they talk about pictures, they want something that pops. What do you think, how, how would you rephrase that or how would you define it? What does that mean? Because I think it's tying into what they're saying and I have an idea, but I want to hear from you be before we f go further with that. Do you have any, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I mean, I think when, when you say something that pops, it's really just something that catches our eye that we really can get you. So not necessarily, you know, oh, well, you know, your eye makeup, it, it popped. <laughs> yes, but it's really to try to get something that pops so that we can get more of an essence of you rather than just, oh, you know, blue is a good color. And it's the personal you, yeah. right? Yes. It's what you yes. actually bring. It's yeah. the true essence that, that you were hinting at, and I think that's what's going on. And I would also add that, that I can see your spark or your energy so, you know, there are shots uh, that I look at actors and I'm like, oh, they're not funny. And then I, <laughs> and then I look at other shots and I go, oh, they're funny. And neither one is, is good or bad. I mean, it depends on what we're casting. But, you know, I'm always looking for some hint of your energy. If I don't know you, if you haven't been in my room, if I haven't heard your voice, if, you know, then I need your headshot to do that, if that makes and sense. I, and also, I think that... It, we want you to pop out of the page because you're not in the room with us. So that's kind of like just getting to know who you are rather than just seeing just a photo of you. I will add too that there's something instinctual that happens. I, I'm sure you, like it's an instinctual way that you're looking at a photo after a while. So you're not necessarily, like I feel like I can scroll through pictures and it's all online now and it's thousands of pictures and I can scroll through them and, be Im and immediately get a sense of a person. Immediately think that, yes, I believe this person hangs out at the Echo and watches indie rock shows and you know what I mean? Like it's, so it, you can tell when, uh, when wardrobe feels costumey and you can tell when it feels authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, when, you can, w when you can look at a shot, you, when you, a good shot is when you get an instant feeling from it. And you have a connection with that person casting. They look through, like she said, like they look through images, hundreds and hundreds of images every day. And so the ones that really stand out for, for them as well as me is like when you have like an instant connection with that person, whether it be uh, commercially or theatrically or, uh, you know, sad, happy or whatever. But there has to be something there. And it's important, I think, going back to that first question was, is that when, when people book in, if you give, what I do is I like to give people sort of a, sort of a not a Q&A that they can sort of, that, that they give me or anything like that, but it is a, Q, a few questions that make actors think so that they can actually bring in their internal script, their internal dialogue. They want something, or I assume that they want something like that, so they can actually think about the shoot, they can actually think about who they are as a person, as an actor, and they can really bring those personal feelings or uh, stories and to, to the shoot and, and that way when you're taking pictures of that person they really ca they have a connection with the camera like you know and and that helps as well well and let's be honest too with the pop question sometimes we might mean background color i forgot, color. About the pop. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot about the pop um but yeah so that too <laughs> yeah which i think that ties into the, idea, the, the, the technical aspects of a photo, because if we think marketing 101, everything in a photo communicates something, right? And so being aware of what is the background communicating in addition to what you as the person, your essence, all those things. So is that something, again, discussion with the actor, or based on that, you go, okay, I see that the outdoor is the appropriate, the background or the indoor, or the, is it a discussion thing, or is it just an like you, intuition thing based on? Well, for me, background versus uh, person is like years of basically my mum's an artist and and years of actually looking at pictures and photographs and paintings and things like that so color palette for me is a different story than I think for most people um, I understand uh, like the, 
the trend usually it's been this way for quite a while now is not to especially with things online is not to have the actor especially the hair blend into the background because online I mean that's actually I should say maybe could be changing because monitors are 5k and all that sort of thing so that could actually change but generally the rule is don't make everything blend however there's always exceptions to the rule and if it's a good picture it's a good picture you know if it speaks it speaks it doesn't matter if it's you know what i mean it's very true yeah. i would say in 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 talking about backdrop backgrounds i think that you you know and particularly with headshots that they have to evolve to how things are being cast now and so definitely agree with you about having things blend but i think also in general it's if you have like a brown haired girl in front of a fake wood backdrop with you know a, a brown turtleneck sweater on and casting is looking at that image that's like may, i don't know maybe two inches high you are we are going to lose some information from that photo it's a wasted opportunity but i totally agree with paul that like sometimes you just go i mean there are some agents that have headshots that are like half a person's face or like up a person's nose. And it, I'm not even kidding, and I think you probably know who I'm talking about. <laughs> because here's the I've thing never, with I've this agent, his talent is awesome. John, John Pierce. <laughs> the, he's, he's known for having very unusual headshots. He wants, the, he wants your black and white iPhone photo where you're standing in front of a payphone and it's like, and you're looking this way. And, and that works because that agent has a very specific point of view and he has a reputation where you just go, I know that if he's submitting on this project, these people are right, which is like a whole nother thing, you know? So sometimes a photo really just speaks for whatever reason. I think you're totally right that it just, it communicates something that's sort and of then what intangible. And then what about this? So, I mean, I've seen casting things a few times, but not, off, not often on a daily basis, but... What, what happens if it, they all come up with white backgrounds and then there's that dark one? Do you go, you notice oh, it. shit, that's, kind of, that's the one? You notice you it, but I mean? that doesn't make you click on the photo. Your eye okay. might notice it, but then you go, mm, moving on. So it has to have that. Right? Yeah, you, your eye goes to that photo and say, oh, that's cool, but it doesn't mean that the person is right for the role or that is the right photo or anything like that. Exactly. It just kind yeah. of is like, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, on that layer of what's communicating there's a whole debate of patterns textures things like that in the clothing before we even I, that's part of the question but i think there's a deeper question of current research trends can you talk a little bit about that of the trends you're seeing as casting directors but also how well are actors doing that research before they come work with you and they're like you have clothes that are 10 years old and it might not work for this person yeah well i know for me before a, an actor books in with me i have a very specific discussion about wardrobe and that's after i've looked at at their profile so i feel like i'm actually pretty hands-on with wardrobe i tell you what you sh what i want you to bring and then i put it together for you and of course it's a collaboration but i will um put put pieces together that are in line with sort of the marketing that I, that me and your agent have imagined. Um, but I think in terms of color pattern, I think we're in a really wonderful time for headshots. And I think I should speak mainly commercially because I'm not sure if this is accurate theatrically. Um, but the beauty of headshots now and because it's all online is there's a lot more freedom to really express with your wardrobe. So I, to me, I think patterns are great, colors are great, you know, style is great. Um, I tell my clients like that that T-shirt that you can't bear to get rid of that has a hole in the collar because it's one you love so much. You should probably bring that because we might shoot with it. And because to me that informs how much you feel at ease and informs the specificity of that particular look, you know? So I think all of that stuff is wonderful. Now, of course, we're not going to put you in something where that it's wearing you or it feels like a costume, but I do think that there's a lot more freedom now. When I sat for headshots years ago, it was like no red, no jewelry, you know, black and white only. There were so many limitations, and I feel like a lot of information about, you know, you personally is lost, so... I'll speak commercially as well, definitely not theatrically. I think that they're apples and oranges. Um, but I, I like to dumb it down, and, and you guys might disagree with me, but uh, 
I would say, sure, we get to have more freedom right now, which is cool, in wardrobe and whatnot, but wardrobe is everything, I think. I mean, of course, you have to have a great shot, too. <laughs> you could talk about that. Um, but wardrobe is everything, and how do you figure out what wardrobe you need to wear in your headshots? You need to watch commercials, and you need to wear exactly what, if you're a young mom, look at what all the young moms are wearing. Watch the Tide commercials, watch the SUV commercials with the kids in the back, or you know whatever mom's wearing, that's what you wear. I believe that you don't get extra credit points usually for being really creative and different than everybody else. Sometimes I think you just wanna put on the mom plaid button down shirt that's fitted nicely, looks good on you. And, you know, I totally agree. I don't mean to imply that you should do something beyond what who you actually are. I think you should, I just think who you, like for me, wearing something like this in a headshot, striped shirts and a ratty jean jacket is actually really good for somebody in my category. Um, so I mean, wear what celebrates you personally. And if you're going out for mom roles and you roll in with the plaid shirt, we're absolutely gonna shoot with that because you need your Home Depot shot. Yeah, <laughs> totally agree with Lori. I'm, I'm all about the stereotype. If you're the helpful Honda guy, wear that darn polo. It doesn't have to be exactly that color of blue, but put on a polo. You may never wear a polo in life. I'm fine with that, but you should probably have a headshot that has you in a polo like that, yeah. and I'll go, oh, helpful Honda guy. We call Perfect. them the how can I help you shots. There you go, yeah. totally. Because yeah, um, because. Theatrically, co-stars kind of are stereotypes because you, you, the role can't doesn't have a backstory. Right. But yet, then that evolves as roles do have backstories. So, can you kind of talk about when appropriate, when not appropriate? Yeah, that? I think uh, it's for your main your main headshot. Even though you have many, it should not be as you're saying before you in Scrubs. That's not going to sell you as an actor. It's really about selling you and what you can be. And I think. Um, you know, talking about costumes a little bit, and I, I'm a little m more to the basic. I think that we we want to see you and your essence and what you bring and who you are. And so, for me to see a crazy shirt or crazy earrings, again, I just kind of think like, oh, that's cool. But is that does that mean that? you know, you're stuck to that. Why did you choose that to portray yourself as an actor as a whole? Mm -hmm. So I am a little more basic that uh, you, wa you wanna keep it just a little more you and then obviously have the other fun shots and the crazy shots and all that stuff. Uh, but you don't want to go too specific like, you know, a, a police officer outfit because that's not, you know, Absolutely, you can have a huge successful career as just playing a cop for 40 years. But it would be kind of maybe fun to do one other role, you know? <laughs> so you don't want to pigeonhole yourself too much with the specifics and just have a basic. Which is tough because I think sometimes commercial casting directors want yes. you to get that specific. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, is this, is it, so is this the theatrical versus commercial? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Where's the line? I just want to make yeah. sure everybody, yeah. yeah. And Agreed to disagree all yeah. evening. Apples and <laughs> oranges. They're just yes. so, they're apples so and different. And, and that leads you back into like, what are you going to go out for? What do you want to book? And all that sort of thing. So just, you know, get everything. When and you're again, in, having you're, that conversation yeah. with you guys beforehand and really yeah. figuring out what you want to go out for. And I think it's also every industry has its own requirements and just being aware of that and not one is good or bad or other. Just like mm -hmm. any type is not good or bad or other. It just no. kind of is, is. Um, we're going to transition into um, looking at some headshots, so some of what we're talking about can be specifically seen and you as an audience can learn from that. I want to um, give a shout out to people who submitted and willing to kind of put themselves out there. That's always not easy, so just shout out that way. Give them a hand. Yeah, totally good. Um, and we'll kind of see what happens. So this is our first one. Everyone can see this. So um, we'll just start. We'll, there's kind of two ways to go. Oh, oh, there we go. Let's talk professional wise, just a professional shot of it. Thoughts about it? Um, is it professional? Is it not? Just give us your kind of general overall view from a photo standpoint. You I'll go first. first. Um, okay. Um, first of all, I want to say that whenever you, and I've been in this situation a few times, when you when you show somebody, when somebody says, "Oh, here's my picture. What do you think?" 
automatically a lot of people go, what they want me to say what's wrong with the picture. So, first of all, when you give your shot over, don't even ask them what they want to think. But, but we're here to critique, so I'll, I'll kind of move on. Um, I, I, I don't like uh, bagging on anybody's work, so you can take that one with, with a grain of salt as well. Uh, but, okay, so let's just get to specifics. Uh, so for me, the shot is um, probably not professional. Uh, however, it, he has great energy, and the way he looks and stuff like that is great. You know, if it was me, I would be way tighter, uh, so that it was really just, you know, here, you know, here, just tight, 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 because that sh that would show the person's intensity and and the the lighting's actually. I mean, it's just outside; it's indirect, uh, and that's not a bad thing. You know, a lot of people when you talk about ind indoor outdoor, I mean, it's been this way for quite a long time. We want that natural outdoor look, and you'd be surprised how much effort goes in to making that look like outdoors, indoors. So like the cover of Vanity Fair, you think, oh, they're just outside and they're just like, oh, they're hanging fun on the beach. No, no, no. There's a thing overhead. There's a light in the front. There's some things on the side. It's all, it, it's very thing. So to get that sort of outdoory look, and this is a good example, it is outdoory, but it is a little, you know, the background could be out of focus. So, you know, tighter, Background should be out of focus because it's distracting for casting, for sure. Um, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but that's pretty much it. it, it the, the, you know, the person, the actor, is wonderful. Yeah. Bottom line. But just the framing and the technical stuff is not the best. I think the good news is, is that I would believe that he's going to look like that when he walks through my door. So that's good news for me. Um, the, the bad news probably is that it looks like a good photo that was taken by his friend, probably. Um, so that's not great. Would you, call, would, you, would you call them in the beginning? No, because, because I would feel like he, I would make the judgment that he's green. Um, because his headshot doesn't seem professional enough to me. So I would make the assumption, which whether it's true or not is an entirely different thing. But I, that would be my assumption is because his headshot is not at the professional level that I would hope for, that I would assume that he's new, he just moved to town, something like that. Uh, so I'm kind of very excited about this one. Um, so I, again, I see hundreds and thousands of actors all the time. I'm pretty sure that I did a workshop with him a couple of weeks ago. And I kind of w am looking to you as if you can verify because it was through the foundation, but I, you don't I, know. I do not know that. Okay. <laughs> I cannot um, confirm or not. And it deny. was, <laughs> it was. Um, Is he in this room? He, he was not, it was a, on video. It was a live chat. Yeah, I, I think he's not an LA actor. Yes, he is, he is not. Uh, so, um, and if it's not him, then I'm just, chatting, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure it's him. And so as soon as I saw it, I was excited because I remember him and this really is his essence. Mm -hmm. And you can tell immediately what he's going to bring. Uh, he honestly was a little green uh, when he got up to do his scene. He, you could tell he was a little bit nervous, took a second. And then when he did his, his scene, he was really great. And uh, so that was very exciting to see that, you know, he, you know, you guys get in your own heads a little bit, uh, but he really, it, I think he's possibly just starting out or, you know, figuring things out a little bit, but he is pretty good. And so you can tell by this photo that he is a little green, but it definitely does bring out his essence completely, mm -hmm. if it's him, but I think it's him. <laughs> and so I think, and this is a reason I think this photo is a good lesson learned in the sense of the actor knowing their essence, but not hiring the proper photographer to best communicate that. You can absolutely see that he knows who he is. Mm -hmm. And that is what's interesting about him. And technically, yes, the backdrop should be blurred out or not brick. <laughs> Just because to me that also feels a little dated, like that's something that used to be done is the brick wall and it's kind of not anymore. And I also think that there's a missed opportunity with the wardrobe. Like he could, there 
because there's something about this that feels either militaryish or doctorish or or detective. Like there's a lot of things that this guy can play, but there's the wardrobe is sort of neither here nor there. Um, and I fully agree with Paul. It's far too wide. I mean, again, uh, you know, headshots online now are much more tightly cropped. Great. Let's move on to the next one then. Um, so initial thoughts. How are you? I love this. I feel like he knows exactly, like, this is my age range. This is what I play. I can, he can do Silicon Valley. He can do Jack in the Box fast food ads. He can do, you know, I think that this is a really accurate depiction of um, the roles that this guy can go out for. And I think the backdrop is a little bit of texture, but it's not distracting. Um, it's nice, bright, la natural light. His eyes pop. It's clear. It's in focus. I have no problem with this picture. My, my one thing about it is, uh, great photo. Uh, the it is cut off at a specific spot with his hair and as people get older hairlines change a little bit so I my first instinct is oh is he trying to hide something is, is he trying to elude that it's something else and it could literally be nothing just that he cropped it a certain way but I kind of thought what is he trying to do with the hairline so you feel like for theatrical you still want to see a bit of space at the top of the head yeah or just see the head or end. Say, yeah, just see the head end or, you know, because he does look young. And so my, my instinct was just, I feel like he's trying to not show us the rest of him. Yeah. So I'm going to um, say that out loud um, so there are video people can watch. They're asking if that applies to women as well. And Joanna obviously said yes. Uh, I'll add one more thing. Um, I love his smile and that I can see his teeth. Um, commercially, I don't think that you have to show teeth in every single shot you post. Um, you don't have to do that, but you do have to do it in at least one. And otherwise, I absolutely assume that you have terrible teeth. Yeah. For sure. And, okay. and to piggyback on that, it doesn't have to even be the photo that's submitted to you because no. you can see the other ones. I, I always, uh, it's a really bad day for me if I am only looking at your thumbnail photos. That's never the goal for me. I'm always looking at your additional photos for sure. So it doesn't have to be that shot all the time. Um, but I need to see one because I do want to see your teeth. Otherwise, your teeth are terrible. Yeah. It's just yeah. what it is, right? Or you're from Britain. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Correct. <laughs> oh, bad joke. And also, I know. Just, uh, just quickly, I love the color of the shirt with the eyes, mm -hmm. making it pop, as we talked about. I like the shot. <laughs> I, I think the energy is great. Lighting's super nice. Um, I think the initial, the initial reaction from everybody was the shot's great. So I do ag agree with the head thing, but it is secondary to the initial reaction, so y you would probably likely click on it just just because of the energy that's being put across from the actor. And theatrically, um, when, f when photos are submitted to you, once you click on the main photo, do you also see the rest of the images that pop up on that person's yes, profile? You do. Yes, So in this case, hopefully he has a shot that all... Right. That, this you know, is just the gateway shot. Yeah. That I, he has a great smile, and it is a great shot, so I would look so more... Yeah. If this was a gateway shot, you would probably still click on it. I would, but I would else. also see click it to see what his age range is. So initially, initially, the shot's great and mm -hmm. you, you, you know, gets you in. So, you know, yeah. Great. Let's move on to yeah, the next good. one. Initial thoughts. So pretty. Yes. Very, very pretty. My problem with this photo is I have no idea how old this woman is. Um, I have no problem with posed photos or photo. If you are a person in this category, these, this is a lovely photo. But to me, this woman could be 45 or she could be 30. And there's a really big difference. And if all of her photos are airbrushed in this way or lit in this way, I'm not going to take a chance on this woman because I have no idea what's actually going to walk through the door but it's very pretty. I, I, I like it as well. I think she looks beautiful in the photo. Uh, it's, it feels a little too glam for me if you're trying to find an, you know, a mom who's doing laundry or an everyday person. It feels a little too glam and if I'm scrolling through a bunch of photos for a specific regular person role, I don't know that I would 
click that further to see. Or maybe she's not submitted for that because she knows she's not the regular person. Correct. She's she ain't regular. This is high-end <laughs> cars or, yes. or something yeah. like that. She it seems like she knows the type and it's not. And But I'm also curious too, what what do you guys thought about the white on white? That seems, is that, uh, do you hiccup on that or not? I don't have a problem not? with the white on white. I it's think it looks elegant. Yeah, her hair is dark. She pops from the background. So, you know, um, that's probably the main thing. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean, if it, you were talking commercially, yeah, she's definitely a little bit more um, high-end cars and that sort of thing. Theatrically, I think it's a nice general shot, and she's really present. Um, I mean, I would crop maybe a little bit different, but I think it's a really nice shot. I would just hope that she would walk in the door if it is for a high-end car mm -hmm. commercial. I would hope she would walk in looking just as stunning. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that, Lori? A age range as well. Uh, we talked about age. Oh, yeah. uh, I would agree it's a little more difficult to tell exactly how old she is, but maybe her intention was I can play. Her intention going into the picture is saying I need something where I can play, you know, you know, 28 to 40. But the problem is... I know casting, so yeah. I, the problem yeah, is, yeah. yes, this photo says but I can maybe play. Maybe she's working. She succeeded and she with this photo saying I can play 28 to 40, no doubt. But at some point, someone's going to have to see her in person. Well, right. This <laughs> is a little nervous okay. when she walks into the room. I bet what she's stunning. Inch. I bet she yeah. is as stunning in that picture <laughs> no doubt. as in person. No doubt. So let's talk about walking through the room because well, that's, that's an important should concept. Not be, the goal should be to not. <laughs> let me try that again. Don't trick me. Don't trick me to get into the room, because I will be really mad. And you'll waste your time. You're wasting your time, you're wasting my time, and you really are making me mad. <laughs> if, you, if you don't look like your photo when you walk in the door, and that means age range, that means we weight. Could, that we could maybe even wardrobe. touch on retouching as well. Absolutely. If that's the case. Like, I really need you to walk. So if this is your photo, please be stunning when you walk in the door, right? Um, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I can't tell you it's the it's the bane of my existence um, when calling in actors that I don't know, you know sometimes I I look at someone who walks in the door and I'm like how did they get in here? Did my assistant like how was she gone? How did she, how did they get in here? And then I You're figure fired. and then I look. And I figure out that, oh no, I called them in. They're just 10 years older than their headshot. Or Sometimes I'll take a screen grab of the audition and the photo and I'll send it to the agent side by side. And I'll just be like, heads yeah. up. That's great, but I don't always have time to do that. Yeah. I mean, I just get mad and don't tell anyone and never call you in again. <laughs> it's, it's very frustrating. It like, really, really, really is. Really, honestly, it's, it's a huge offense. So don't trick me. Look like your headshot. Walk in the door like that, and I will be thrilled. And that goes back to you knowing who you are and you being comfortable in your skin and you saying, hey, Absolutely. I used to be a bikini model, and now I'm a mom, and that's awesome, and I'm happy to be here. So it's, and the photos should reflect that. You can't take a day off from your essence because it's who you are. It's who oh. you are. I love that. I like yeah. that. Good point. He trademarked it. He trademarked it. <laughs> Hashtag that stuff out. There you go. Next photo. It's a real some who, like. Who wants get to start? I'll start. <laughs> this is a terrible picture. It just is. This woman, it, it's all over the place. She's probably older. It is probably a very old photo. I don't know why she's wearing a formal dress. I can tell that the that what she's trying to express is I'm fun and I'm interesting and I'm lively. And this person could be all of those things, but this photo is scary to a casting director. And they're gonna be like, nope, I'm not taking the chance. The end. Uh, sure, I, everything and more. <laughs> um, it's, she could be very talented she would not be seen from this photo. I would not click to see more. I think maybe her daughter or her friend took this photo, um, lent her an outfit that did not fit her. And uh, and I, I told you guys I'm from New York originally, so You're I apologize. Fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's fine. Leave her alone. <laughs> um, I just want to be honest so that I can help you. Some actors uh, need to hear this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, the oh, end. <laughs> oh, we 
we see these shots in Los Angeles all it, the yes, time. No, it this is it you know and it's it's bad news for this person. Um they need some great headshots and that is not one of them. And I would wish for her to get great headshots. But this happens in Los Angeles. It's not I see these photos. And I think what also what you're hinting at is the idea of there's an industry standard. You must meet it. That's there's there's no question about that. And so No question. <laughs> and so your headshots are the most important to, I mean, it's it's the first and only way you're gonna get in the room. If we don't know you, we have to like your headshot first. It doesn't matter how great your resume is. It doesn't matter what you've done, how many classes you've taken. If you have a bad headshot or even just a mediocre headshot, you're not gonna get in the room. And once we know you, your headshot matters less. Right. Like, you, we, we are submitted really wrong dated pictures of actors we really really know and it's like it's fine we know exactly who that person is and it's not a big deal but, but they've been called in by your office a hundred yes, times yeah you have over years and years of a relationship yeah, yeah. i concur <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she's got not i mean i can see where she's going with it but it's not great totally yeah. and yeah industry standard is industry standard is you know they, they, it sets the bar a little bit more uh, and higher. I, I, I think you would agree. You, you almost can always tell when it's a free headshot, right? Oh, I don't. You know, did that. I feel like the framing is actually okay. I mean, but but so I'm but not sure if it's free. But it, it's one of those moments where she's trying to be sort of perhaps, or she's perhaps trying to be, you know, in a in a sort of um, you know more fun free position. But it's it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Headshots are not something you want to skimp on. I don't think that it means that you have to go to the most expensive commercial photographer out there. That's the, not the definition of the best headshot photographer, but headshots are not the place to skimp. So I say, I will make the bold yeah. statement and say never, never, never have your friend take your headshot in your backyard, never. Unless your friend is Paul Smith, and yeah. then, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then you I call up Paul and say, "Thank well, you." you. I, did, I did. Are we friends now? I did, Can I say that? Yes, I did start in my backyard in the, in the garage. So, and so that's a big compliment. Thank you. But, but also, the friend's great for testing the outfit or trying to see a type or trying to see like. I mean, I, I, I would not. I would perhaps not use your friend to, to not take a picture because I feel like any experience is good experience. You know what I mean? If you if you're not sure about yourself in front of the camera and you want to get experience, then it's okay to do tests. It's okay if your friend says, "Oh, you know, do you want to shoot me?" Blah blah blah. You know, because you're going to get experience. Any experience is is fairly good experience, and you might get something. You may get something. So I wouldn't discount it completely. But when you get to a certain point where you actually want to get in the room and you want to work <laughs> and you want to make money and you want to yeah, join and SAG and you want to get more money yourself. and yeah there's and a it's a message to the universe that you yeah. are taking and these seriously. guys these guys have been in this business for a long long time as have everybody and what it comes down to is like a, tr a trusting relationship like that someone that if they're if they've got a commercial that's you know this that the advertising company is paying 20 million dollars for that you're not going to you know what I'm saying? You can you can cuss. And it's okay. It's the internet. And, and yeah, I don't know the rules on YouTube. Uh, so and and theatrically, there's a you know it's a, a multi-million dollar picture. They need people that are going to be able to do the job and do it really really well. And the first step is something that shows the the people that have been in the business for a long time that you're serious about what you do. And this is a kick-ass shot. And this is where I'm going with my career. And that's it. And then we can sort of go, oh, we can actually see that you're serious. So maybe we'll give them a chance and perhaps they can move on to bigger and better things. Your no thoughts? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> this, is not, this is not a professional photo, right? Right. It, it's mainly about, here's what I love about this picture. This guy is who he is. He ain't trying to get a dad shot. He ain't trying to get a, a professional shot. This is who he is. You call on this person when you want creative, out of the box, interesting, unusual faces, et cetera, right? But get a photo that celebrates who you are that has good lighting. 
Because it's just, it's all, you know, it's flash right on the face. And so to me, it says that this was taken like at a wedding or something. It's a nice photo, but it's not a professional picture. I love, th I love the word celebrate. That's it's beautiful. He happens to be sitting in the front row, and he yeah, and he's okay. wearing fabulous glasses. So yes, I love the glasses. The glasses. It's, it's, and glasses he's are got hard to great shoot, style. <laughs> well, there's tricks for that. And your photographer, if you shoot with glasses, he'll tell you, or she will tell you, exactly how to work the work the glasses thing. But agreed, you got great. You've got great style. You need to show it. And and I do Big time. see that you have a great essence, and you can feel who you are but it, it does feel like this is a great shot of you, and so you decided to just kind of crop it to make it more of a head shot, and I want a little more of a photographer's shot. How do we feel about the crop on, on the bald guy? I, I, I like to it because it brings you know you to the face. Yeah. Still, right? yeah. You know what you're getting. Because he's not hiding yeah. anything. I, I always he feel like the crop, sometimes on the bald guy, and they, they usually like it too, but you know, you can kind of go, okay, that looks, you know, it brings you into the person, not the say that it's, but Unless you have a surprise ponytail, like right where it's missing, <laughs> <laughs> you're okay. Yeah, and this guy actually might have that. Right, <laughs> right, true. Um, let's talk about horizontal versus portrait, because oh, the yes. idea of, I feel like part of your style is the clothing, and almost want to see a little bit more of that clothing, right? And so if you switch the framing of that, you would get that sometimes. Do so. you have a preference? Oh, yes. This, this is basically my favorite thing to tell at <laughs> workshops. Uh, vertical, not horizontal. We are looking through tons and tons of pictures, and I know that photographers and everyone has different of opinion, but I, I really like when I'm flipping through a stack of headshots and resumes, and everyone is facing one way. Oh, are you talking about hard copies? Yes. You still deal with hard copies then? Yeah. So that's a different thing, yeah. right? Yeah, so we'll You're get the commercial version in a minute. Yeah, so just, just so when, when we're flipping through, we are looking this way, and then we see a head that is sideways, and there is a solid chance that we are not going to take the extra two seconds or the extra, you know, exercise to move our bodies to look at it or to move the whole stack to look at it so that it's correctly the way that you want it to be seen. And we might miss you. And that it always makes me sad because I don't want to miss you. But if I'm literally holding 200 headshots and I'm trying to look through people, um, it, doesn't make a it does make a difference. And also, when you do a hard copy, headshot one side, resume on the other side, when it is horizontal, you flip it over, and sometimes people's heads are to the right, sometimes they're to the left, so then when you flip it over, the resume is upside down. And you want it to always be the exact same way so it is easy and professional and it looks the correct way, so it's just easier for us. So not horizontal. Okay, so commercial point of view, what are your thoughts about horizontal versus portrait? I just would like to see more of his wardrobe. Wardrobe is, is important to me. Um, and the more information I have, the better. Now, don't take that the wrong way. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, I might want to see one body shot on your, you know, if you've got five shots, especially if you do a sport or your yoga or blah, blah, blah. I'm into the proof because I believe that actors lie about their skills all the time. So if you are a skilled yoga person, I want a photo of you Agreed. in your yoga outfit doing a pose. Um, but... Uh, but I do want to see more of your wardrobe because I need you to tell me how to cast you. I'm actually looking for you to tell me how to cast you. And part of that is it with your wardrobe, yes? So I'm not seeing enough of his wardrobe and I would like to see more because it looks cool, I think. Well, let's move on to the next one. She doesn't, whoever wants to start. Portrait versus, uh, I think what you were saying is it's sort of, me, it's more fine either way, as long as we get more of a, as long as we get as much information as we can in the picture. I actually, I shoot both horizontally and vertically and I, I have no problem viewing, because again, on LA casting, you're looking at a thumbnail first. 
So once I click that thumbnail, that thumbnail is going to be a uniform size regardless of what the actual image is. So if I click the thumbnail and a horizontal image pops up versus a vertical image, that's neither here nor there. That's why I think it's interesting. I always tell my clients, get one photo printed theatrically because some theatrical offices, offices still use them. Commercially, you're pretty much never going to be asked for a hard copy. But so that's a good point to say, if you're going to get one printed, make sure it's a horizontal shot. Makes a, lot, makes a lot of sense. No, vertical. Vertical. Vertical shot, excuse me. Not a horizontal shot. Y'all are paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Everyone passed that test. I, I mean, I, when I shoot, I'd probably say I'd shoot every actor probably 98% vertical. Um, and then, you know, it just depends on the, on the person. If it looks good, then, you know, I'll shoot a few and you could use it for IMDb or personal or whatever, something cool. Um, it just depends on the outfit and all that sort of stuff. Um, this shot, she's great. Uh, you can see it's outside. It looks a bit New Yorky because of perhaps for that reason. Uh, but that's not that. That's not a bad thing. Uh, it might be the monitor, but skin tone wise, it might be just a little light. Um, and so I think maybe the exposure might be off. But it could be just the printer. It could be a bunch of things. Again, I'd probably uh, the red card probably crop out that, just because it takes your eye away from her. I'd prob I'd still m maybe go in a little bit tighter, but sometimes showing uh, a little piece of the arm actually um, helps you. So it's not so much blue as well. So it sort of breaks it up. Um, but generally, it's it's okay. It, you know, it's passable. But you know, perhaps. Um, when she gets, uh, if sh if she has an agent or something like that, they probably want some other stuff as well. You know, it's an okay, it's an okay shot. I agree. Right. This is this is an okay shot, which is not the goal. Okay shots aren't the goal, um, and I don't love the background. And it may just be that might be a personal pet peeve. So I'm not sure that everyone in the world would agree with me, but it's just too much. Um, so I would need something simpler than that um, for me personally. I would agree. She's yeah. she's awfully pretty. That's fun. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah I, th I think as my first instinct is New York theater actress mm -hmm. because she wants to bring the New York into her photo so much that it is part of her essence. Uh, so it is a little distracting, but it is pretty. Definitely red car is what I go to first. I'd be embarrassed if that's like somewhere on the Brea. <laughs> no, <I> imagine. <laughs> it definitely doesn't feel LA. It it feels like she wants to bring what whichever city that is into her essence, and, and it's that's too much. You don't yeah, need that. We want to feel you, and also I I don't know if it's the lighting. And again, New Yorker, I apologize. And it's a little like lighting wise. It's yeah, a little I'm not flat sure. Is and is it's that outside. her bra strap or not? And I I, I think uh, it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you could retouch that. But yeah, so that's just something that again, I noticed that I, you know. Yeah, if you go with it, it's again with those outside versus inside. It's okay to shoot outside if the person that is shooting you knows what they're doing. And I can, I can literally say I can, you know, do a few things, and that lighting would actually be really, really pretty. Um, but again, it's like, you know, maybe the friend outside with just the camera and nothing else, and that's what it ends up like. This is probably a Lori opinion thing. You can thing. make it kick more. <laughs> you could. But, but I would say that if you are living in Los Angeles and pursuing a career here, get headshots here. Mm -hmm. Because they are different. And if I look at headshots mm -hmm. and I think, oh, that's probably from New York, then, then that tells me something about you. And it may work against you. I don't know. Um, again, I say you don't get extra credit points for being original and different um, commercially for me. Uh, so get LA headshots. You want to look like you've been here. You know what you're doing. You're not new here. You're not, you know, th those are things that you don't really want to project most of the time. So get LA headshots if you live that's in probably, LA. That's probably what the agent would say as well. You know, we need them to look a little bit more LA. And you know, if you do shoot here, I don't know if people are from out of town, but uh, if you do shoot here and you're from New York, I get tons of people, like especially doing like uh, like the Broadway 
tour or whatever, I get tons of actors that actually from New York that shoot here because they work out there as well. You know, perhaps the, the, the New York casting people just don't care and they like just get a good shot. But so they work both coasts. But when you come out and it's sort of like the New York street scene, you will get that comment like, Time to update. Classic New York cobblestone type of thing. And, oh, and also because I've done... I want that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of projects in different cities. And uh, my big thing is, again, as soon as I see that, where is she located? And that's, you know, we just did a project in New Mexico. And if you see someone with, you know, a desert background, you're like, oh, maybe they're local hire. Someone like this, I just think, I don't know if I want to bring her in because she might not be located here. I'll, go ahead. I'll just say, to me, it's, it's less about feeling like this is an actress from another city and more about this shot just not being as interesting as this person probably mm -hmm. actually is. To me, I think that there's, she's probably a lot more stylish and a lot more, there's a lot more personality. I think that, I think the photo itself is just generally flat sort of across the board in terms of lighting and technical stuff too. But also, I think you probably would forgive seeing that little sliver of bra strap if there was something that just jumped out at you. Yeah. Would you care? Probably not. But chances are, if this photo submitted, you're not looking at it long enough to notice the bra strap. Correct. True. Correct. I also think this, this photo brings up a good um, point of this may be the printed photo, but when you crop a thumbnail and rise above that deep V neck, you got some funky image potentially going on and you kind of have to be aware of. Yeah, how is that going to look as a thumbnail? Sure. How a picture is going to look as a thumbnail versus maybe how it looks like it's printed. Mm -hmm. So I think that's mm -hmm. also. So many things you have to remember. Yeah. Latte, how that's what sucks about headshots is Gosh. it's so subjective. It's so subjective, and everyone has yeah. an opinion. But that's why you go with someone who knows what they're doing. So then you can trust them to mm -hmm. take care of that stuff. So the, you don't have to think stuff, about yeah. it, right? And someone you that you it's connect true. to and relate right. to. That, yeah. you, you want to do your research on a photographer. You don't want to just look at a flyer and say, oh, I'll take you. This is, oh, that this person's is a big doing deal. a special for 100 bucks. And <laughs> right, exactly. This is kind of a big thing. We're like a, we're like a wedding dress. You know, you kind of know when you know. <laughs> That goes yes, for the guys, no. too. That goes for the guys. You just kind of, you know, yeah. Quote that one right there. You know? All right. The next photo. Is that you? Is that you? <laughs> no. <it's laughs> not professional. Uh, not too much work went into this shot. It just kind of feels like, oh, I... I want to be an actress. Let's get the fo you Take know. Take me camera around ready. the other side of the house. Yeah. Against the stucco. Let which wall is best, and let's go for it. Here's what's awesome about this picture: is this person is totally fine with us knowing how old she is. This is mid fifties. She's not trying to pretend otherwise. She's, um, you know, I think that's great about who this actual person. But I ain't calling this in because that's not a real headshot. And it, yeah, it looks like her daughter she's took it. She's bare bones, I like her. But I, I like that she's bare bones and she's prepared to, to go there. You know, a lot of actresses, you know, um, a lot of actresses, uh, actors I should say, guys as well included, uh, sometimes, it, you know, they're not ready to really show themselves. If you're looking for that shot, do you know what I mean? Not everybody is, but I think it's quite ballsy to actually do it. Again, the shot's not great that at all. That doesn't mean that you're going to, you have, you know, as a casting director, you yeah. have maybe 35-ish slots in your schedule to yes. give a role. So maybe you're going two days, which is awesome, because that means you get to show 70 people. So if, if 3,000 pictures are submitted for mid-50s, you know, mom of teenagers or whatever, and that photo submitted, you're not going to give yeah. one of your it's maybe 70 slots to this person yeah, because not she's not a professional It's actress. not up to professional standard. It's, and she has a great look. Yeah. She seems like a good person. I have no idea if she can act or not and what her professional level is. You, I don't know if you'd call her in just based on the picture, though, because, no. of, the uh, well, no. because of the actual you know, standard of the shot. And unfortunately, I would assume she can't, which is crazy, because who knows? But I it's not crazy, though, because <laughs> if she was a professional actress, at some point she would have a headshot that 
yes. in some way tries to. Yes. It's also your your reputation on the line as well. If you're hiring people, you know, y and they're spending, you know, like I said, millions of dollars or even fifty thousand dollars, it's your reputation as well. And if you, you know, if you're hiring, yeah, and it's your time. So yeah, you have to look professional. It might be like the Polaroid that wardrobe takes once you're already on yes. set and you've been hired and all that stuff sure. and that's but absolutely her her yeah. plaid shirt yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. i like all the I know nice I sounds oh <laughs> uh, he just he makes me happy i don't know yeah, I, I totally love this person. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, such a wonderful warmth and vulnerability to him while still, again, being super specific with age range and also types of roles at this point. He knows what roles he's going to play. The suit is, you know, it's perfect for him. You can see this suit and see beyond it to other roles. Um, yeah, I think this is a great picture. Would you... Um, Maybe the thumbnail obviously would be cropped up a little bit. A tiny he, bit, but yeah. But he, but he knows that, so there's enough room to that, and he still can communicate. Yeah, no information is lost if you crop it. Yeah. No, not really. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. And you can see his energy is wonderful and, and all the rest of it. Again, it's got also getting to uh, backgrounds and stuff like that. It's got good contrast, and he pops as well. You know, the, the lighter hair and uh, the lighter face pop from the darker background. And he has a lot of warmth. And commercially, that's really important to me. There's not a lot of mean, bitter, terrible people in commercials. They tend to be warm and lovely and nice and kind and likable. Th those are people that you see in commercials. Yeah? I mean, there's, it might be the- Certainly the one-off role here and there, but like, yeah, in general. Yeah. In general, Majority, yeah. yes. We're, we're hiring warm, likable people for commercials. Watch them. Um, and he is, Warm, 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 which is super cool. Yeah, and he also seems like someone who is talented and, and does book roles. And from this photo, I think that he would come in, do a good audition, and really do a solid job in the role. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I could tell that from this photo. And you know what you're getting walking in the room. There's no 100%. surprises. It's perfect example of what Paul said. It doesn't matter. It's it's just enough contrast. Mm -hmm. It's not you're not. It's not a blue suit in front of a blue backdrop. You know, it's it's. You can not blending you can at all. see it, and I think it, the face is probably more important than the suit because you you it's probably the it might be the last thing that you're looking at on that it, picture. You're really actually looking at his energy. He looks like a very kind person. And to give you a little context, as on the screen you might be seeing different resolution. It's oh. more brown than, oh. than, than uh, it's black. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's oh. terrible. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. No. So they were like, uh, okay. guys, we're really well, that, smart. See that. <laughs> He's a floating so Which goes back to your so, example so of resolution that's a good, and stuff. That's a good example of like, you know, when you get a shot, and you see, like, everybody's viewing experience is different. There's different monitors. There's totally. different brightness. And as there's the different rooms. You have to let go. There's different rooms where you see shots in. Like, if you're in a natural light environment, it's different when you look at a monitor than if you're looking in a fluorescent office. Um, there's so many different variables to screens. There's even, like, that thing now uh, at night. There's, like, a night switch that turns everything super warm so you don't get that blue light. And that can even change the color of a picture. So imagine if, I don't know when you guys are looking at pictures, but if you're looking at late at night and you have that setting, only, all of a sudden everybody's, only at two or three everybody's orange. Usually cross-eyed by the time <laughs> we're looking at saying? photos. They, yeah. they only work from yeah. 9 to 5. They don't do anything in the yeah. evening. No, <laughs> no, never. Good energy, good, you know, that takes over everything. So, lesson learned. Let's go to the next one. If, there we go. <laughs> okay. She looks... Beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. The forest in the back <laughs> is just too much. The purple shirt sweater blanket. What is the shirt? What is the shirt situation? I don't know. I feel like she's warm, <laughs> but I don't know what that top is. And it's. I don't want to say it's dressing me out, but I'm focused more on the forest and the what top it is than her and as an actress 
I would I would click on this photo if the role was like a hippie Earth Mother. Uh, Earth Mother, yeah, who's you know okay. who's performing the wedding ceremony in Big Sur. Yeah. Yeah. Or if we were looking for real people, real people, um, who who actually travel, are world travelers, blah blah blah. But when does that come up? I mean, it's, you know, I, I would never say, so this is a good headshot for that one job that comes every 10 years, you know. So, no. I'm pretty sure she's under, a, like, a tiki tent kind of thing. Um, and uh, she is beautiful. Um, but I can't tell her body shape at all, which does worry me. Oh, yeah. She, I do not know what, aside from her face, I don't know the rest. That's confusing. Um, I, she's stunning. She's really beautiful. Uh, the color palette the, with the background and the purple is not great. Um, um, you know, yeah, that's pretty much it. She just I needs a professional headshot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's really pretty. Yeah. Is that blown out on our monitor or is it? See, it's not blown out Yeah, there. it's a little blown out. Okay. To me, this is, o this is a really lovely photo of this person. Again, I think the age range is accurate. I think the wardrobe choice is really spot on. I can tell that she can play a therapist. She can play a, you know, she can play a, a, a mom or a young grandma. She, you know, there's a lot to me that, a, a lot of loveliness and specificity, but I, but it's just a little bit too blown out. <clears throat> so I would, I would want it, but it could, blown it could, out. It could yeah, be that's a, that's. I think that's the monitor it versus monitor the side screen because it's reading a little. Light. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little more. The I like the so show. What's I think more she's accurate? Great. Is that more accurate? Yeah. Got it. Okay. It just happens to be this monitor for some reason. It's, okay. It's well, a, if it doesn't look blown out to you guys, and to me, I really like this picture. I, I, I think it's wonderful. It's really good. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's really a solid photo. I. I think this is a great main headshot. I would like to s click on it and see other shots with her teeth. Definitely. So yeah. she's curious. Okay. Yeah. Yay. I I would look for more and or call her in. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go? Anybody go. who has Ready, special thoughts. Go. Um, he's super handsome. He's very handsome. Um, if I had to critique, I mean, maybe the, I mean, I don't, I don't like to bag on stuff that, you know what I mean? I, I feel like it's a good shot. Um, I think the V-neck is probably a little kind of done at this point, but he looks good. You know, it leads him up, it leads you up to his face. Um, it's a solid shot. It could, it could be um, actually a little poppier which is probably not actually... Seems a little dark. Yeah. I mean, if that's blown out and that's like regular, then it is going to be dark. But that's the printing or the, you know, the adjustment. I think a lot, another thing that we haven't touched on is actually this is a really good point, is when you, ta when you take shots with, with, with somebody, kind of like in, back in the old days, old days, um, there was film and... You have like you, when you st when you're technical wa technically wise, you, when you shoot a picture, you don't want it too light, you don't want it too dark. You want sort of a medium sort of ground. When I shoot, I try and get as close to a finished product as possible because that's really what people want to see. When they act, when a client looks at a picture, they don't want to see a shot that's dark and they don't want to see a shot that's super light. So I shoot as close as I can. I might even do a little bit of adjustment as I'm shooting um, if I'm working uh, tethered to a computer which is normal for me. Um, so uh, I th when you get those, if, you s if the photographer gives you the pictures, um, it, every photographer is different. So, you know, some people just give them away and some people don't. It's, that's a personal thing. Um, when they give you the pictures, a lot of the times that shot still needs work uh, to make it look really, really good and to give you what they're talking about before is that pop. You know, and it really just depends on the photographer that you're working with and how they shoot initially to get you like a finished product. That's why it's really, really important to f to not only source out somebody good that's that 
a f good photographer, but also someone that, um, or a lab, or somebody professional that can give you that extra little bit at the end where it really does zap the way it's supposed to zap and the correct exposure and the correct contrast, the correct colors and that sort of thing. And that doesn't, I'm not talking about retouching, I'm talking about just that initial thing. Things look different, bigger, than when you say, oh, I take them, I, I got the big file, great. I take it and I put up on LA Casting or, or whatever the other one is, uh, Actors Access and now Casting and all the rest of them, and IMDB. Uh, so, and you lose quality, you do. And so it's really important to have like a professional at the end, whether it be a, a photo lab, which is the way I do it, but also either that or the photographer, to really give you like a good product at the end that, that you're gonna be able to use, use and to really get that zap online because you do lose quality. And that's probably perhaps what happened here because it's a really nice shot, he's really present, he's super handsome, you know, there's stuff that I would do differently, but that's just me. But I think that he's just missing opportunities, if that makes sense. Um, he missed a wardrobe opportunity. He's, he, you know, he could do something that seems a little lazy, I guess, to me. Um, the background is weird. It, it's, it's a fine shot, but again, that's not, that's not the goal is to have a fine headshot. You I'm need being to kind, have, I agree. You need to have a great headshot, and this isn't a great headshot. Um, He's super he handsome, super he could handsome. do so yeah. much better. Or just the idea of everything communicates something, so you wanna make sure you, you're using everything to its fullest degree. Yeah, I completely agree with that, and I think that he has a great look, and I'm just not getting his essence from this. And I don't know if he's comedy, drama, I don't, I don't really know, and you could be both, you can be it's everything, but I'm not really sure what, what he's capable of, and not in, you know, just as... Who's I, his competition? Who? Who would it be his competition? I mean... Is it Andrew, what's his name? Mid-20s, attractive, Andrew, young man. Garfield? Is it Garfield, Andrew Garfield? You want to look better than Andrew Garfield. Yeah. You want and to also, steal roles from Andrew. I... <laughs> That's the goal That's for me. The goal. That's If I saw the picture, that would be me. I'm like, how can I make this guy look like a working actor? How can I get, how can I make a shot? Without being dishonest. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, but this, how this can I make him, him look? Yeah. Like, to me, this really is just sort of like, look, yeah. cute boys in their mid-20s in LA are kind of a dime a dozen. <laughs> so what makes this person special? I'm sure he is a special person. Right. That it, who he actually is is not in question. It's what the photo is conveying. So I want to know, I agree with Lori, it's missed opportunity. What makes you you? What makes you unique? What makes you interesting? The, the, the muted red v-neck t-shirt doesn't say anything. So yeah. And also I don't know if it's the lighting, but where if he did more of a crew neck, it feels like in the V area it's very light, that he's almost paler yeah, there and is that, that should, that's makeup, makeup. Is that that's makeup. if, right, he, if he had a makeup, makeup artist uh, yeah. then he, they would have or, yeah, or no, actually the photographer would actually good photographer actually sees everything i've learned so many i've learned so many things from all the mistakes i've done throughout like the years and yes when you yeah probably yeah it's, it's I, I mean i would definitely don't know how old the picture is but again i'd probably go with the crew but yeah. that's just a personal preference. Some dudes look great in V's, but. You guys are picking good photos. And yeah. then Ray. Um, I, I do like this photo a lot. It's, it's too close up. I want to see more of him. I, I like his face and everything it's conveying. The blue on blue makes me look at it and it draws my eye to it, but it's it's a little too much blue for me. Um, I think it? here's an example of a photo that technically to me should not work. There's a lot that's not technically right about this picture. And yet, to me there's something really interesting about this choice and um, I kind of, I, I dig it. And it's one of those inexplicable things where like, I don't, I couldn't actually tell you why I dig it, but I do. Uh, I think it's him. Mm -hmm. yeah. He has like a certain knowing about him and confidence and is a like vulnerability there as well. And I agree with you. Um, I'm not a massive fan on the, on the, the colored backgrounds, but it actually really works for him. 
and I don't know how casting would feel about it. Um, However, you know, it looks that that's quite popular now, editorial-wise. That that blue, um, so you know, maybe pull out could look kind of cool editorial-wise, um, which would still probably maybe work for casting. But it's a nice shot, and it really does come together well. Mm -hmm. It's him though. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm intrigued by the shot, but it's probably him and not it's the him. shot because I agree. Yeah. You know, the the background with the shirt is probably not ideal and. I would like the cropping to be a little different, but his eyes, there's something about his eyes uh, that I like, and, and one actually is a little bit smaller than the other to me. Everybody has like. that behave. And, and, I think it's, <laughs> and I think it's great. Um, I think that people try to fix that about themselves or don't try fix to that. fix, don't do that. Um, don't, don't trick me, you don't need to trick me. Um, so I actually, I feel like this is an honest shot and it intrigues me and I would look for more. My remote not working? Did it freeze on me? I could talk more about the eye thing if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Deep wells, you just wanna fall into them. <laughs> can we, um, the tech booth, can you, can you move it on your end? I don't know. We may have to end here, but we were gonna end with the oh. next one because we're out of time. So this is actually, ironically, how it's gonna, um, how we were gonna wrap it up anyways around now. We talked a lot, and there's a lot of things technically, essence-wise, all those things that hopefully people will rehash their notes, rewatch their video, but we like to kind of wrap it up with kind of the golden nugget where if all of all the things we talked about, if you want them to remember one thing, what would be that one thing you want them to remember and, and I'll, whoever wants to start that, I'll leave it there. No pressure. I know, there's, because they're gonna rewatch the video and they'll, they'll hear all the rest of the stuff, but if, they, if you want them to leave tonight with like, okay, here's one. Uh, to me, it's, <clears throat> it's authenticity. It is celebrating where you currently are at and it's uh, investing in yourself and and taking the photo that celebrates who you are so that we can celebrate you, I think is, I wanna leave it. Uh, that's sort of exactly what I was going to say. So if I only have one thing, I feel like I have to change it. Um, my, my biggest thing with just headshots and resumes and acting and just as a whole you guys are selling yourselves as a brand and you are showing us who you are and you should really have a sense of who you are before you go out there and talk to your agents talk to your photographer talk to your therapist whoever you need to talk to and really figure out what what your goal is and, and the types of roles that you want to do, the types of roles that you're good at, and maybe some roles that you're not good at, and really go towards that. And in your headshots, it should be you and really know what you're trying to portray. And a lot of other things, but that's all. <laughs> know your commercial types, obviously, I'm speaking commercially. And uh, the way that you can figure that out is by watching commercials and be brutally honest with yourself. It's not who you, c I could play the Walmart mom. Um, it's, that's, that's not the goal. It's, who, you know, we, we live in Los Angeles, so we can actually hire a, you know, a mom that's perfect for Walmart. So, so you don't wanna stretch too much. Be honest with yourself watch commercials, we, you will be hired for who you are. And when you walk in the door, the game is over. Like, we're gonna see what you look like, so don't trick me. Walk, you know, have the great headshot that reflects the type that you really will book. And when you walk in the door, if you really look like that, your chances are awfully good. Certainly, if you give a solid to amazing audition. Right? Do you see how that all works? So you don't need to stretch and you don't need to be prettier or skinnier or heavier or whatever, older, younger than you are. There's commercial roles for all of you, some more than others. Um, but 
have the shot that accurately reflects you and a great commercial type walk in the door looking like that and you are ahead of the game. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, everything that they said. Uh, but yeah, just be yourself. It's really important and bring your own stories to, to photo shoot. Really be, have your internal work going on. Um, treat yourself like a, like an actor, you know, bring in that internal script and, and whatever you're thinking about and whatever you, whoever you are, that's going to show through and, and then stick it out because that takes, it takes a while. <laughs> for, 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 not for everybody, but for, for most of us. We didn't, like, you don't, you know, actually photography is kind of, I feel like photography is kind of like being an actor, you know, you have to like build up, I, you know, when I first got out here and I was like, what am I doing? I, I literally bumped into somebody and, and then started doing it, but, but, you know, I thought, oh, how, how are these guys booking roles? Like, how, so how is he shooting so much, or how is she so shooting so much? And how, how is your friend, you know, how is your friend booking work and you're not booking work? It just takes time, and patience, and dedication, and talent, and all of those things. Then people like these people, these people will trust you that you can bring the goods. To, to their project and, and then and turn your book work. So just be yourself and keep at it. And that's a great place to end. Let's give them a hand and say thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for all for thank coming. Thank you, guys. Um, and we'll have a wonderful night. Let's give them a second to slip out and then you have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Thank you.